All right, guys, let's get uh, right to it. Uh, the laptop here. Um, I hate to do it, but the laptop just solves a lot of problems, right? Uh, it's not as fun as like an MPC or a, an Octatrack, but it's more versatile. And especially if I have to play like a playlist. Uh, so Ableton Rig with a small Eurax GIF here uh, and a few other gears seems to be the right way to go for now, at least this first go around. Uh, I'm not a DJ, certainly, more of an acousto electronic composer and musician of sorts, but the laptop, as boring as it is, I think it's the right choice for this kind of venue and possibly just for my future evolving live gigs in general. And Ableton just works for this kind of stuff where you want a bit more control over your music uh, than, say, a DJ type of software. I agonized over this Eurex GIF because it had to really balance a whole bunch of factors and kind of fit it all into this small SCIF. I mean, I could have gone with a, a larger SCIF, but ergonomically, uh, it just couldn't be bigger than this. I'll explain this in detail a little later, but it was something that I had to be able to reach with my right hand, and it just had to kind of live around here. Okay, so the star of the show in this Eurax GIF is the uh, nebula here. So I've got uh, a bunch of um, cues that essentially I took from the main Ableton session and kind of like chopped it up and put it uh, onto the nebula. And if, if I just scroll through the um, files here. But anyway, I just ended up settling on this uh, violin, acoustic uh, violin kind of a cue. Now, I could not say enough good things about the Nebula. Uh, I have to say that out of many, many granular synths and modules, I keep coming back to this module for all of my hero and solo phrases. It's so expressive and um, there's something about the way the knobs are laid out and it exposes the most musical and relevant features that makes it super intuitive and very uh, performable. So I own the Big Brother version of the Bitbox as well. Uh, but this little guy is surprisingly playable and quite accessible for something that's so small. Uh, I could trigger single shots or loops, uh, just a great Swiss army knife uh, type of module, like a, like a tiny MPC. It's kind of all over the place here, but uh, um, essentially it, I was using the 1010 Music Bitbox here to kind of feed the R bar. Uh, but um, yeah, anyway. Another great performance-friendly module is the R-Bar by Instruo. Uh, it's just a great sounding module and it gives a very different look than say the Nebula. The controls here allow instant access to various sample layers, making it quite musical. In fact, that phrase uh, has been granularized inside the arbor. Okay, so I got a few more utility modules here. Uh, I've got two of these output modules, which can be independently routed directly to the uh, Model 1 mixer, 
which is quite important for performance related reasons like independent EQ and aux effects uh, ends and such. I also have this little master uh, processor type thing from Endorphins. I'm not really using it for now, but it's definitely a nice to have in case I need a little more uh, DSP uh, and EQ shaping for my sounds. The final module here is the MIDI I.O. What it does is really serve as a bridge between Ableton's modulation capabilities and the rest of my Eurac uh, setup here. Since this 42 uh, HP Eurac skiff is so super compact, uh, the MIDI I.O. is quite the necessity and it can leverage a lot of the power of uh, the Ableton modulation capabilities, as it were, back to my modular setup. Okay, so now on to my non Eurac gear. Uh, the centerpiece of this live rig is the Model 1. Now, I've been using the Model 1 for quite some time now, and I have to say, I love it so much. Uh, first, it's got six stereo inputs and two stereo aux ends, uh, which allows for these two uh, guitar pedals to uh, work in conjunction. I absolutely love the EQ uh, filters and the overall build quality. It's got that desirability factor as well that just makes it a pleasure to own. Now, as you can tell, um, the sample is quite bright, so I can use the sculpting feature. The way it sweeps. I mean, that's just one example of uh, correcting this problematic uh, sound. This Model 1 even has an analog dry feature, which is an overdrive saturation circuit of sorts, kind of like a like an old school analog overdrive on each one of the channels. So you can really color your sounds through this board, which makes it again, very unique and uh, stands apart from some of the other mixers that I've seen. There's a feature called zero crossing detection circuitry. Uh, the manual states that this performance uh, friendly feature is built into uh, every circuit. Uh, maybe when you're turning, um, the filters, uh, it detects the zero crossing so that there's never any kind of harshness. Uh, if you guys know anything about this zero crossing detection circuitry, I would love to know in the comments. Uh, but you know, I get it. Uh, I think um, it's kind of a, a cool, unique feature of this mixer that say other digital counterparts may not have. Did I also tell you how much I love the faders uh, and the construction? Uh, this block geometry. I just love the long, narrow compactness of it, and it's so ergonomic in this performance live rig. Now, I do have a few gripes. Uh, uh, first are the RCA inputs. Now, I get that this is a DJ mixer, but it would have been nice to have a, a couple of like quarter-inch balance inputs as well on each channel. Uh, that kind of made my cable management a bit of a mess, as well as having to purchase a bunch of RCA to uh, quarter-inch converters. Um, also, a small issue is a lack of a mic input. I mean, I get that this is like super hyper focused on DJ work, but it would have been nice to have a mic input. It also has like three phono preamps for turntables, which is something that I won't uh, ever use, I think. It doesn't have any built-in DSP either. It's strictly analog. Uh, just know that this is not your typical mixer, like say the SSL Big Six or other audio production type mixer in this size and price range. So I've got these two uh, guitar pedals. I think this will change uh, over time depending upon the performance set. Uh, I would like to see maybe you know adding a Zen delay instead of the H90. But for now, I've got my two favorite pedals here, the CXM1978 by Chase Bliss and the Eventide uh, H90. Uh, because the Model 1 does not have any built-in effects, uh, which honestly I don't mind because it has two stereo aux returns. So uh, I've got the uh, H90 mapped to uh, this one, uh, the first uh, stereo return, and then I've got the uh, 1978 uh, being returned on the second uh, channel. Uh, 
this is one of my favorite reverb pedals. It's lush, it's vintage, uh, it's long, it's got a ton of character. It's super cool looking too with the moving faders. And then of course the H90 uh, Eventide Swiss Army Knife Digital Verb. Okay, so the I.O., uh, I'm using the Focusrite Scarlet, uh, and uh, all I have to say about this is that it sounds great, uh, but more importantly, it has four outputs or two stereo outputs. And this is really important because I want to be able to route the track here and then independently. This piano is uh, the Omnisphere. Now this is key because I want to be able to route my live playing through my virtual instruments to this channel. And then the, the loops and such uh, things like that uh, to the main channel here. And it's uh, really nice because I can sort of like ad lib and do other kinds of things on top of what's going on without having to like lug another synthesizer. Uh, one other quick thing I want to mention is the UAD Octo. Uh, I wanted to keep the load on the laptop as minimal as possible and also to just keep the latency as uh, to a minimal as possible. And I don't want to take up too many external gear either. Again, it's all about like balancing how much gear to bring versus what I can get out of the box versus some external control. And uh, I decided that it was worth it. Uh, since I'm kind of all in on the UAD uh, ecosystem with uh, Universal Audio, especially their plugins, uh, this comes in super handy because I'm able to use some of their really great sounding uh, analog compression uh, uh, emulators and EQ plugins without taxing the computer. The controllers now, this is probably one of the more ever evolving things. At first I wanted to have the uh, Ableton push controller like really bad. Uh, I love the push, but just ergonomically, uh, especially with this hybrid setup uh, and the external gear that I wanted to incorporate like the GR1 and, and the Decker Stream, I just couldn't fit the, the push as sort of the mainstay. I mean, there are workarounds for sure, but mostly this was an ergonomic decision. So um, I wanted to be more connected to the Model 1 than the push, that really was it. Uh, so between the laptop and the push and the Model 1, things were just like getting out of reach. Ergonomics for live performance, for me, I wanted to keep things simple and slick and very, very intuitive. So I can rehearse each move and reach for things as I need them. Uh, so maybe in the future I can incorporate the push, but it's something that had to go. Okay, so back to the controllers. So yeah, I would love to have a full weighted keyboard but again as a keyboard player like it's just hard to lug that thing around so this key step is kind of a, a, a thing for now maybe i'll explore some other options in the future um, same thing goes for the Ableton controller here i don't want to be clicking around for the laptop as much as possible and uh, so while I love the, uh, um, some of the other solutions, uh, this APC Mini had the, the faders and the push buttons on top, uh, unlike some of the Novation ones where it was like either or, like they had the faders but they didn't have enough buttons or they had these push buttons but they didn't have faders. Uh, so uh, again, this was a great compromise. So yeah, this is gonna be an ever evolving rig. Uh, I'll post some shorts of the backyard set in the coming weeks. So uh, please subscribe if you have not and hit that notify uh, button to uh, help support this channel. And uh, I hope you enjoy this and thank you. And I will see you again soon.